Okay, so here is my explanation of uh, Kimball um, modeling. So, um, Kimball modeling is kind of like the first type of, um, it's one of the earlier versions of uh, enterprise data warehouse type modeling uh, invented by a guy called Ralph Kimball. Um, a lot of the earlier um, versions of uh, warehouses that I did were based on the Kimball model. Um, when I did Digicel, that telco um, based in the Caribbean, um, they uh, predominantly used, uh, when I used Kimball there, um, I, I actually uh, uh, migrated more towards an Inmon model, which I'll touch on uh, shortly. But Kimball is, is pretty straightforward. You have a series of sources, and you've got your ETL sausage factory here. Uh, doing your extraction from these sources, doing uh, cleansing and then transforming um, to the, the target model. And the target model consists of a um, like raisin bread uh, made up of um, facts, uh, which are raisins, and these um, uh, dimensions, which are sultanas, if you like. <laughs> so um, the dimensions. Uh, contain um, quantitative or qualitative information, and the um, the facts contain quantitative information. And um, the other thing is, um, so this is a whole series of conformed um, dimensions being shared by facts, and uh, this particular architecture here is sometimes known as a bus matrix. Bus matrix architecture. Now, um, facts um, resolve the many-to-many -many relationships that exist between dimensions, and they do this by having a little key in here from um, the uh, dimensions. They also, as I said, contain quantitative information, and they're centric around a particular um, piece of information, like you might have a billion facts, for instance. Um, that's if you're, I don't know, um, in, a, in a telco you might have a CDR fact, called data record fact. Yeah. And you're going to have a particular grain associated with those facts as well. Um, and usually you try and aim for the, uh, the lowest um, uh, grain possible that will support all of the analysis you need to do. Now, the reason you'd have um, uh, set stuff out in this fact and dimensional model because there's quite a good deal of transformation that needs to go on from the uh, from, from these sources which are generally um, uh, OTP uh, normalized sources and um, to these denormalized uh, fact and dimensional formats. The reason why you do that is um, because you're trying to reduce the number of joins that you have to do in order to do reports. And generally speaking, with the fact and dimensional format, all you really need to do is you need to just do one level of a, a join. So you're joining a, a dimension to a fact, a dimension to a fact, a dimension to a fact. So uh, it reduces uh, join depth, we'll call it. Whereas if you had uh, your standard uh, normalized model with, um, you know, say a grandparent, a parent and then ch children down here, you, you might have to do um, a join that um, goes two or three or maybe 10 deep or something like that. So it's one of the advantages is that it reduces the uh, join depth. Um, however, there's a number of disadvantages. Um, one of the, uh, the major disadvantages is that it kind of, you're kind of preempting the type of analysis that you can support. So, um, preempts slash constraints analysis. Stroke reporting. And uh, what this means is if you um, want to do uh, a new type of reporting or if 
horror of horrors, you get the grain of your fact wrong. I have seen examples of that, by the way. They're shocking. And um, if you get that grain wrong, you're going to have to literally, particularly if the grain is, well, especially if the grain is actually that you require is lower. Say, for instance, the grain is uh, sales per day and you actually need a, a grain of sales per hour, you're going to have to introduce a new fact and it's a major pain in the ass. Um, so that's, that's a, a, a very distinct uh, disadvantage. Another disadvantage as well is that you are having to do quite a good deal of um, transformational um, uh, stuff here. You're taking in from uh, normalized sources, as I said, and you're having to denormalize them and convert them into uh, this fact of dimensional format. So uh, quite a lot of transformational overhead. And it's, it's mainly to uh, combat uh, these two issues um, that a, another type of modeling was introduced by a guy called uh, Bill Inman. And I'm actually, for, uh, I, I've met Rod Kimball and I've also, I'm, I'm friends, with, uh, friends with Bill Inman on LinkedIn. Uh, very interesting characters, both of them. But um, um, Bill introduced this system whereby you can, um, rather than creating this denormalized fact in dimensional format, um, uh, in your enterprise data warehouse, um, you create a system of record um, which is normalized. Um, and that system of record, at a logical level, um, the normalization might be um, second or third or, or um, fourth or fifth or even voice card model form and then uh, when you physicalize it you're obviously going to roll up and roll down to normalization uh, so it might only be second normal form so he suggested this um, paradigm you have sources and these sources go into your ETL there's a little bit of convergence and conformance and uh, instead of going into a fact and dimensional uh, format, you go into um, your standard uh, normalized uh, format. And the great thing about this is that um, there is um, the disadvantages that you've got, obviously, um, more joint depth. Um, but an advantage is that you're conforming um, across sources and that you can um, um, and that your transformational overhead is low. And you can support um, any analysis without a major rework of uh, your ETL and your model. So uh, there's loads of other methodologies. Uh, of late, I guess, uh, data vaults has been around for about 10, 15 years. And this is the idea that you bring all the data in uh, to a particular area and you, uh, you then do your transforms and your cleansing and all that kind of stuff. Um, another thing would be of late entity modeling has become quite big and this is where you have relaxed attribution it's particularly um, important when you're dealing with uh, the variance associated with uh, that you typically see in big data scenarios so take, take for instance an owner entity and an owner might have an address a date of birth and a phone number in one source in another source they might have and a registration plate and a social security number and um, maybe um, a height attribution, you know, five foot seven or something like that. And so entity modeling allows you to uh, define an entity and take in a different attribution of that. There's loads of other methodologies as well, but that in the main, that's, that's Kimball modeling and that's, uh, that's Inmon modeling. And uh, that's
that's the end of my video. I'm sorry to have overrun so badly. Thank you.